All right, assalamu alaikum. So in this video, we'll be starting off with river crossing problems of relative velocity. Now, before I start off with the conceptual parts of this chapter, of this uh, subtopic of relative velocity, there is something that I want you to remember and take note of very carefully. And that is that whatever you are going to learn in this part of the syllabus, uh, that is the river crossing problems, this does not apply to swimming pools, lakes and seas. The reason being that the water in swimming pools and lakes does not move at all, whereas the water in the seas does not move in any particular direction. Whereas in a river, we know that a river starts its course from some high mountainous area, probably some glacier or some lake which is at the top of the mountain, and then it flows downstream. Therefore, a river has a very definite direction of flow which is absent in case of the sea and uh, which, uh, a sea which doesn't have any particular direction of flow. The water in the sea uh, can flow at any place at any time depending on gravity and other factors but not the slope, right? And uh, the water in the swimming pools and lakes doesn't move at all. Having said that, let's start off with river crossing problems. The first thing is that a river flows downstream. A river flows downstream. This means that if this is my river and this is the direction of the flow of the river, that means that this is the downstream direction. And this also means that if there is an object which starts from this point A and wants to move to this point B, which is, uh, as you can see, to the right of object A, and uh, which means that it co coincides with the direction of flow of the river, it means that point B is downstream of point A and let's say this distance is x, x meters. So we can say point B is downstream of point A by x meters. Whereas if I have another point, point C which is here. So we can see that this point C is actually to the left of point A, which is against the direction of the flow of the river. So we will say that point C is, uh, let's say this distance is Y. So point C is upstream of point A by Y meters. So the summary of this discussion is that if an object flows along with flow of the river, it means that it's going downstream and if the object is going against the flow of the river, it means that it's going upstream. Why am I telling you this? The reason is that see, this, the name of this chapter is relative velocity and velocity is a vector quantity. Therefore, just finding the speeds would not be sufficient. We'll also have to state the directions and the angles. So when we have to talk about directions, we have to take a reference point. In bearings, that reference point is the north. Whereas, uh, and we'll come to that when we we'll do aircraft problems. Whereas in rivers, the uh, reference for directions is taken to be the flow of the river itself. And with regards to the flow of the river, we have just two possible directions. That is the upstream direction and the downstream direction. Uh, and we don't have four directions like we have in bearings because we have in bearings we have a north we have a south we have east and we have west another example uh, when we have two directions only and we don't consider a lot of other directions is movements of forces in physics uh, 
uh, in uh, so those of you who have physics will be able to relate to this that uh, in moments of forces that is turning effects of forces we have just two directions that is clockwise and anti clockwise just like we have only two directions in moments of forces in river crossing problems we again will be having only two directions and that is the object will either be moving upstream or it will be moving downstream or it will be moving straight ahead for example there is a point d here which is due north of uh, point a so it's straight ahead so a river flows downstream and if any object moves in the direction of the flow of the river it is said to move in a downstream direction and upstream if vice versa now having said this that a river has its own direction of flow uh, we can understand that if an object wants to cross a river the direction in which the object is finally going to end up will be influenced by the flow of the river itself Let's take the simplest example. I put a stick in water here, in this moving water here. So what's going to happen is that even though the stick itself is not moving, that is, the velocity of the stick relative to water is absolutely nothing. But still, the stick will continue to move downstream along with the flow of the river. So this example can tell us that if an object is actually moving in a river, its movement is going to have an impact because of the velocity of the river in itself. So let's say if an object starts to move in this direction here, like this, uh, the starting point is A, and the object starts to move in this direction. So since the river is flowing in this direction here, the object will not end up here. Instead, the river is going to push this object and it's going to end up somewhere probably here. So the second point is the flow of a river has an influence on the motion of any object crossing it and this is a visual representation that, you, that I just showed you here okay so what can we add on to this point the flow of a river has an influence on the motion of any object crossing it therefore Alright, so, so now let's understand this. Let's say that an object is at A and it wants to end up at D. Having said that the flow of a river has an influence on the motion of any object crossing it, if I want to go from A to D, I should not take this direction. Uh, sorry, I should not take this direction. Why? Because the flow of water is going to push me further downstream and I am going to end up somewhere here and not at my required destination. Therefore, the, the direction in which I should set course of my swimming is to be decided according to the flow of the river. So I will just add this down. Therefore, if an object If an object wants to travel from A to B,
of A to B, it should not take the course connecting A and B. Comma, since the river is going to push it downstream of his desired destination. Downstream of his desired destination. I want you to I want you to copy these points down because this is going to give you a very nice uh, conceptual understanding of river crossing problems and in fact it's going to help you visualize the questions better. The desired destination. So this tells us that the, the direction in which I should actually set set course will have to be carefully decided keeping in account two things. Number one, where I want to go and number two, the flow of the river. So, the course to be taken by the object is determined by two things. Number one, where the object wants to go and number two the velocity of the river so I'll just make this diagram neater I'll make this diagram again Right, so let's say I have my river here, which is going in this direction. I have my object here. There is this point A, sorry, uh, this is the point A, which is the starting point. I have a point B here, which is upstream of A. Then I have a point C, which is right above A. And there's a point D, which is downstream of point B. So if, let's say, I want my object to go from A to B, I should not take this course. The reason being that the direction of the flow of the river is going to push my object downstream of my desired destination. So even though I've taken a course connecting A and B, my object is going to end up somewhere here probably. So what should I do? I should take a course which is something like this further upstream of point B so that the flow of the river can push the object to B. Likewise, if I want my object to go from A to C, I will not take a course which connects A and C directly. Why? Because if I do so, my object is going to end up somewhere probably here because the river is going to push my object further downstream of my desired destination. So I should take a direction which is a bit upstream of C so that the combined uh, effect of the velocity of the river and the velocity that I have taken with, uh, and the course that I have taken gets me to end up here. So I'll take a course somewhere this way so that the push of the water can get me to my desired destination. Similarly, if I want to go to D, I will not take a course which connects A and D. Why? Because I'll end up somewhere here because of the flow of the water. Therefore, I should take a direction 
I should take course something like this so that the push of the water will cause me to end up at D. In all this explanation that I have tried to, I have tried to deliver, uh, we can notice one thing. Let's take the last example. That is of the object going from A till D. Yeah. <coughs> the object starts from this point and the object ends here. So, the distance travelled by the object is this, AD. This is the distance travelled by the object. And this distance would have been covered in a particular time. Let's say that time is T. So, the distance AD divided by T is going to give us the velocity of the object. That is, the true velocity of the object. Why? Because the total distance that the object has covered is nevertheless the line connecting my starting point and the destination. So this is going to be my true velocity of the object. This arrow here is the velocity of the water. Then what about this arrow here? Remember I told you that the course to be taken by the object is determined by two things. That is where the object wants to go and the velocity of the river. Since this course is being taken, is being decided on the basis of two velocities. That is the velocity of the river and the true velocity of the, of the object. See. Where the object wants to go is going to give us the true velocity, right? I just explained this to you. Once again, since the course to be taken is being decided by taking into account the true velocity of the object, which is going to be decided by where the object wants to go, and the velocity of the river, the course to be taken, the direction of the course to be taken, is going to be the direction of the relative velocity. So, this is the relative velocity. And also, the magnitude of the force with which the object starts off its motion is going to be the speed of this relative velocity. So, we can say that the direction of the course taken by the object is the direction of the relative velocity and the direction Sorry. And the speed with which the object starts its motion is the magnitude of the relative velocity. Sorry, I am having a cold in summers. Right. Having said that, this arrow is actually the relative velocity of the object with respect to water. So, if you recall from the last video where we studied the relative velocity equation, the, the relative velocity of the object with respect to water would be represented by velocity of the object slash water where true velocity of the object is v o and velocity of water is v w so we have our relative velocity equation for river crossing problems which is nothing different from what we studied in the previous video v o take away v w once again this is a vector equation 
so if i know the magnitude of the velocity of water and if i know the magnitude of the true velocity of the object i can't simply do subtractions using the relative velocity equation and find the relative velocity or anything of the sort instead this equation is going to help me draw a triangle which will be resolved using trigonometry and uh, then we are going to do uh, we are going to apply trigonometry and find whatever is required so having said that in your questions you can be asked to find the true velocity of the object if you are asked to find the true velocity of the object this means that we are concerned with this vo so to find vo what will we have to do we'll have to send this vw to the other side so vo would be given by the relative velocity of the object with respect to water add velocity of water so what i'll do is if i have my uh, relative velocity in this direction and i know that my water is traveling in this direction so by using the tip to tail method of vector addition as discussed in detail in the previous video here will be the vector for added for the velocity of water and then here is the connection which is going to give me the true velocity of the object right likewise if i have to find the course to be taken by the object that is the path in which the object is going to start its motion so i'll use the relative velocity equation itself that is vo slash w is equal to vo minus vw so how will we do this i'll try to draw a small sketch here in in this area so if let's say the true velocity of my object has this direction vo and the velocity of the water is in this direction then i told you that subtraction is actually negative addition so v o take away w can be assumed to be v o add negative v of w and negative v of w is going to be exactly the same thing as v of w except that the direction is going to be reversed having said that if i want to find the relative velocity of uh, of the object with respect to water that is the course which the object takes it would be given by it would be done by my true velocity add negative velocity of water which is somewhere something like this so this is vo this is negative vw and here is my velocity of object with respect to water and what does this velocity uh, this relative velocity tell us again the relative velocity tells us the course which the object needs to take in order to end up in its desired destination and the magnitude of this relative velocity is going to tell us the starting speed of the object likewise if you want to find the velocity of the water uh, you will again do some manipulation to the relative velocity equation and you are going to find you are going to sketch a triangle then you will so you will resolve that triangle using trigonometry and find out uh, whatever you want okay so now coming to some examination terminologies uh all right let's uh, do it this way i'll directly do a question and that that question is going to tell you how are we actually going to go about with this kind of questions right so i i write this question down uh the diagram i'll draw the diagram later shows a river 90 meters wide comma flowing at 2 meters per second between parallel banks
a ferry travels in a straight line from point A to a point B from a point A to a point B directly opposite A given that the ferry takes exactly one minute to cross the river comma find number one the speed of the ferry in still water in still water and number two, the angle to the bank at which the ferry must be steered. Right. So this is our question. This is uh, uh, October, November 2006, paper 2, question 4. Right. So the diagram that's given in the question is something like this. Here is my first bank. Here is my second bank. Parallel banks means that the river is perfectly parallel. Like You can have a bank like this theoretically. But in this case, we don't have a bank like this. We have nice, straight, perfect kind of banks. So here is point A. And when they say that point B is directly opposite B, it means that it's straight in line with B and if I make a line joining A and B it's going to make a 90 degree angle with the river banks. Okay, the second thing that's given in the diagram is the velocity of water which is 2 meter per second and the third thing that's represented in the diagram is this distance of 90 meter. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to decide the components of our relative velocity uh, of our relative velocity equation. So we have velocity of water at two meters per second. Now the second thing. See, the object wants to go from A till B. Right? This is the direction of the true velocity of the object. Why? Because this is its starting point and this is its ending point. I told you here that where the object wants to go is actually the direction of its true velocity. And the distance between point A and point B is 90 meters. And we have been told in the question that in order to cover this distance, the object takes exactly one minute. So I can find the, velocity, the true velocity of the object as well by using 90 divided by 60. Because I need to convert minutes into seconds to give me 1.5 meter per second as the velocity of the as the true velocity of the object now i'm left with the third thing that is the uh, the, the velocity the relative velocity and obviously that's something that i have to find out because the remaining two components of the relative velocity equation are already known to me so if i want my object to go from a to b I obviously wouldn't take this path because in that case my object is gonna end further downstream of B which is something that I don't want. So the direction that I should take should be a bit upstream so that the push of the water can cause my object to finally end up at B. And this is the direction in which I should steer my ferry so that combined with the flow of the water the object ends up at B. So this arrow that I have drawn is actually going to be the velocity, the relative velocity of the ferry in water. So this is, I write F here to represent ferry. So this arrow represents velocity of ferry with respect to water. So the first question, the first part of this question asks us to find the speed of the ferry in still water. Okay, now another thing here. 
what exactly does still water mean? So whenever you see velocity of an object in still water or velocity of the object in uh, still air, it refers to relative velocity. Now why are we referring to the relative velocity as the velocity of an object in still water or still air? The, for, for the answer to this question, let's recall what we studied in the previous video. In the previous video, I told you that when we have to study the relationship between the velocities of two objects, we need to take one of those two objects as a reference point. The easiest reference point of all reference points is zero. Right. So if I have two velocities, let's say velocity of the ferry and velocity of water, and from this equation, we can see that the reference object here is velocity of water. So this is my new reference point. So when I'm making this my new reference point, I'm actually assuming for the time being that water is stationary. And it is because of this assumption, I get this part, which is the velocity of the ferry with respect to water. And how did I get it? By assuming for some time that water is stationary. I hope this concept is clear. If this is not, you can ask me in the comment section or you can uh, refer to me on my Facebook page or you can WhatsApp me. Uh, the details are there on my Facebook page as well. Anyway, so speed of the ferry in still water refers to the, the magnitude of the relative velocity and the, the angle to the bank at which the ferry must be steered refers to the direction of the relative velocity. So using the relative velocity equation, we'll first construct our triangle. So we know that V F slash W is equal to velocity of uh, the ferry, take away velocity of water. So the velocity of the ferry, the true velocity of the ferry is this straight line connecting A and B. Here we go. So this is velocity of the ferry. Now what to do about velocity of water? which is being subtracted from the velocity of the ferry. So the direction of the velocity of water is this way. What we assume is Vf add negative Vw. So we are going to reverse the arrow of velocity of water and add it to the tip of the velocity of ferry vector. I'll just erase this, having made this concept clear to you guys. Sorry. So here is velocity of the ferry. Here is negative velocity of water, and this is going to be the relative velocity that is, velocity of ferry with respect to water. Now we know that with the velocity of ferry has a magnitude of 1.5, the velocity of water has a magnitude of 2. Now remember this, uh, the triangle that we draw is a sketch for our convenience and for helping in our visualization. Therefore, it does not have to be accurate, right? So, uh, this is a 90 degree angle between these two. So we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find the speed of the ferry in still water. So this is going to be uh, 1.5 squared add 2 squared and my answer is going to come out to be exactly 2.5 meter per second. Now the angle to the bank at which the ferry must be steered. So this is going to be this angle. Remember here is the bank down uh, under this. So this is the direction. Why am I taking this direction and not this direction? The answer is that in river crossing problems, as I told you, uh, the directions, there are two directions, upstream and downstream. And since upstream and downstream directions are uh, properties of the river itself, therefore they should be taken from a reference point on the river itself. Therefore, we take the direction from the river bank and not this. However, we will be using this angle in our calculation. The reason being, that this whole thing is 90 degrees. 
and this angle can be easily determined using trigonometrical ratios and then by subtracting this angle let's call this theta from 90 we can get the required angle so theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 upon 1.5 which gives me uh, whatever angle the direction would be 90 degrees minus theta and this is coming to be 36.9 degrees upstream because remember I can have a 36.9 degrees downstream as well so I should mention upstream here as well right so I hope uh, the concepts behind uh, river crossing problem are very clear from this video I'll try to make another video in which I'll solve three more questions on relative velocity river crossing problems uh, till then assalamu alaikum if you have any questions or any queries regarding this you can ask me in the comments or you can contact me via facebook via whatsapp uh, whatever you, you need to do assalamu alaikum